What's going on everybody? Today I'm going to go through a quick video about how to take data and normalize it from 0 to 100% of the support phase. I'm going to be using a script that I wrote a few days ago and posted a video about. I will link to that in the description. It's pretty simple code. It's just loading in a data structure called grfexample.mat and inside of this data structure we've got ground reaction forces in three dimensions. And I'm going to be using the vertical ground reaction force just to show you what this data looks like in the vertical. It is multiple steps, uh, and it's just the vertical ground reaction force for each of those steps. And uh, what I did last week is I took a simple for loop and figured out when the heel strikes and toe offs were. Some people did point out to me, and this is important, that you can do this without using this for loop structure. Um, but just for continuity's sake, I'm going to keep it here. If you did have a really long data set, you do want to try to avoid looped structures like this to save time. So always try to vectorize if possible. And you can do that um, using a few different options for heel strike and toe off identification. All right, so just to show you what those look like, we'll go ahead and plot. So you can see we've got red indicate heel strikes and green circles indicate toe offs. And so you can see that we found these for each of these 10 steps. We found them and they look uh, like they are in the appropriate location. So we did uh, accurately find those heel strike and toe off gate events. And then what I did is I set up a, a for loop that would go through each individual support phase and pull out the support time and the peak vertical ground reaction forces. So let's just run this quickly, show you what it does. So if we look at support time, for example, what we're going to see is that we get uh, a bunch of different numbers. So the, the first step took 0.734 seconds. The next one is 747 seconds, uh, 0.728. And what this means is that the data for each of these curves are different lengths. Um, and so therefore, they're going to they're going to be different. So if you were trying to do something for a manuscript like average across all of these steps so that you can get an ensemble curve for a figure, it's going to be very difficult because they're different lengths. And so a common way to deal with this problem is to refit them from 0 to 100 uh, percent prior to averaging across and then giving uh, giving whoever giving the reader an average curve. So what I'm going to do is just very quickly write some code that will uh, take each of these data curves and transform it from 0 to 100%. This is relatively easy. I'm going to do it within this loop because we're going to do it for each step. And I'm going to uh, gather all of these into a, uh, into a single matrix. And this will make it easier at the end to average across uh, all of the columns. So normalized GRFs. And I'm just going to call this normalized ERF. B. We'll set this empty. OK, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually come into this for loop and normalize all of these steps. So the first thing that we want to do is figure out the length of the data that we have. And we're going to use, and we're going to, we're, basically we have to re-space this data. And we're going to end up ultimately using MATLAB's built-in spline function. And spline requires a few things. The first thing that we're going to do is call linspace. We're going to say 0, 99. And then we're calling in the length of the data that we want to evenly space out between 0 and 99. And that's going to be GRF z from heel strike heel strikes uh, k to toe offs k. Right? What this is going to do is it's going to take the length of our data and space it normally from 0 to 99. Okay, then what we need to do is just create a variable I'll call it new length, and that's going to be 0 to 99. Now we get to use uh, MATLAB's built-in spline function. We're going to say the GRF z normed is equal to spline. And then inside of spline, what we're going to pull is data length. 
and then we're going to pull in GRF Z. We're going to give it the data that we want to actually fit, which again is from heel strikes A to OAS A. Uh, and then the last thing that we need to give spline is this new length variable. Uh, okay, let's make sure that we have this right. Data length, and then we've got GRFZ from heel strikes K to toe offs K. I actually think that we need that there, and then this one can be taken off, and then new length. Okay, then the last thing that we're going to do is just gather this. So normalized GRFZ. Uh, we'll say all rows of the K column. So uh, what this is going to do is on each each step is going to have its own column uh, within this matrix. It's going to be equal to GRF the normed. All right, let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. Hopefully it works. Yeah, it runs just fine. Now normalized GRFZ should be a 100 by 10 double where each column is 100 rows and it is the actual ground reaction forces from each step. That's what it looks like it is. Let's go ahead and plot these to make sure, give ourselves some room here. So we'll say figure, plot, and in MATLAB, this is very easy. We don't have to run any kind of for loop for this, although I suppose you could if you wanted to. Normalize GRF Z. So we'll plot all of them on top of each other. And you should see that they are all from 0 to 100% in length, and they are different from each other. So it's not like it's the same one. Um, so this just shows that we took each one and normalized it from 0 to 100%. Right. Now, if you wanted to find the average of these, what you could do is you could say mean GRF is equal to the mean of normalized GRF B2. And that 2 is going to specify that you want to average across uh, across columns. So we'll evaluate that. And this should be a, a single, single column of 100 rows. Yep, 100 by one double, and this should be the average of all of those. So let's go ahead and plot that to make sure that that's what that is. Mean GRF. Go ahead and evaluate that. And there you have it. And now let's make this a little bit better looking. We'll take all of them, so we'll plot all of them. And then we're going to say hold on, and we're going to plot the mean ground reaction force uh, in black, and we're going to make the line width larger so that it sticks out a bit. The line width too. So this way we'll see the mean on top of all of individual trials. So there you have it, right? That thick black line is the mean, and then you can see all of the other ground reaction forces each trial. Uh, behind the mean. You could do the same thing with the uh, standard deviation and then uh, and so instead of calling mean you would just call a uh, standard, de standard deviation built-in function and then you would get the standard deviation you could go plus or minus one at each percent and then you could maybe put some shading behind that uh, mean uh, ground reaction force curve. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel for more of this. I will point out that uh, the idea for this particular video came from a YouTube comment. Um, someone asked me to do something like this. Um, so I am reading the comments, and I'd be happy to take other suggestions. And if I can do it, uh, I'm happy to, and I'm happy to, to, to try to do things even if I don't currently know how to do them. Uh, you should always keep trying to learn. Okay, uh, you can also find me on Twitter. You can find me on LinkedIn. You can find a lot of my codes up on GitHub. And, uh, of course, you can keep watching me here on YouTube. All right, until next time, keep coding.